بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صوت الله صوت الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Alhamdulillah we continue going over a tremendous book by the Fadil to Shaykh Al-Allama Imam bin Baz Rahimahullah Ta'ala a book which is entitled Durus Al-Muhammah Li'amat Al-Ummah Important Lessons for the General Masses of the Ummah or for the General Muslim We are still going over the section which deals with going over the, the five pillars looking at the five uh, pillars of the deen of Al-Islam and we have reached the third pillar and the likes of these durus are of extreme importance <coughs> and this is why you find the imma the imams of the deen the ulama the mashayikh they spend a lot of time in educating the Muslims as it relates to these affairs because these affairs are important and it is a must that we get ourselves in the habit of studying our religion because the likes of these affairs are from those affairs that a great number of Muslims it is binding upon them to know in detail but it's from those affairs that all of the Muslims have to know in general have to know in general and believe in them in general and so on and so forth so with that being said we want to look at the third pillar from the pillars of the religion Naam. And as a review, who knows what is this third pillar? We have covered the Shahada, Naam. And last week, we went over the Salah, Naam. So the third one will be what? 
الزكاه نعم احسنتم the third one would be الزكاه now again i want to remind everyone to ponder and to look at some of the the benefits as relates to the zakat some of the fruits that come from it because bismillah ta'ala we will see the superiority of the deen of al-islam illustrations of the superiority of the deen of al-islam as relates to the five pillars and perhaps we will come to appreciate better the statement alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-islam was sunnah that all praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah naam the fadilat al-shaykh al-shaykh abdul razak bin shaykh abdul muhsin al-badr hafizhum allah ta'ala he mentions he says wa ruknu thalith and the third pillar as zakat then it is as zakat was zakat hi qaridatu salati fi kitabillah azza wa jal and zakat charity as is translated then it is connected to the salat it is the partner of the salat naam inside of the book of allah it is the partner of salah inside of Allah's book. Does anyone know or would like to gather as to what the Shaykh he meant by that statement that the zakat is coupled with or the partner of salah inside of Allah's book now? Now, many many times. Now, now, I said it, and that is, as the brother Jazakallahu Khaira answered, is that often inside of the book of Allah, when the salah is mentioned, then you will also find mention of the zakat. You will also find mention of the zakat. An example of this can be seen. And Allah Ta'ala statement wa aqimu salat wa atu zakat wa ruka'u ma'a raki'in as it comes in surah al-Baqarah and establish the prayer and pay the zakat and bow with those who bow and bow with those who bow yani na'am bow with those who bow also Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he says فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَتْوَ الزَّكَاءِ And establish the prayer and pay the charity. Thus establish the prayer and pay the charity. And you find many ayat inside of Allah Ta'ala's book come like this. Where the salah is mentioned and then the zakah is mentioned. Naam. The salah is mentioned and then the zakah is mentioned. Naam. Was zakah and again, I want you to think about this and to reflect over some of the benefits of the, of, of the zakat. <clears throat> some of the impact that the zakat has upon the individual and upon society. Naam. The zakat to tahiru al maru. Zakat from its benefits is that. It purifies an individual. The zakah, it purifies a person. Naam. It purifies an individual. What to zaki qalbah. And it will purify the heart of a person. It will purify the heart of a person. What to zaki And it will purify his money. 
he'll purify his wealth. Naam. Wa takunu barakatan lahu wa limalihi. And the zakat will be a blessing for him and for his money. Naam. Just think about this now. Right? The zakat, it purifies people. Person, he will say, How? What do you mean? How is a purified person? In what way? It purifies a person because, and it purifies his heart because when a person gives the zakat, then what are they, what are some aspects that they're purifying themselves from? What are some despicable traits that they're purifying themselves from? Who can give me one? Will be what? Stinginess. Stinginess. Nah, sent. They'll be purifying themselves from what? From stinginess, from being stingy. Right? They would purify themselves from being greedy, from lusting over money and wealth, and obsession with money and wealth, and so on and so forth. Because, as is known and as is, it is witnessed, those individuals who are stricken with the disease of the lust for wealth, they are the individuals who don't give, right? They find excuses not to give. They come up with any reason to hold on to their wealth. Why? Because they are stricken with the sickness of wealth and they fear it will diminish. They fear it will diminish. So they don't want to give none of it away. Right? Because they think it's going to diminish. And this is because of their disease. It corrupts their vision. It corrupts their understanding. Because the reality is what? It's the opposite. The zakat, it doesn't decrease the wealth at all. But rather it will bring blessing to the wealth. It will bring blessing to the wealth. And for this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in a hadith that has been collected by Muslim and Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما نقصت صدقة من ما that charity it does not decrease the money charity it does not decrease the money نعم the sheikh goes on and he mentions he says was الزكاة قليل that the zakat is actually small. The zakat is, is small. It's not a great amount, but rather it is small. Min kathir. The zakat is a small amount from a lot. But listen, this is what I want us to think about, right? A'atahullah azza wa jal al that the zakat is actually a small amount from a lot that Allah has given the rich. That Allah has given the rich. Right? So, subhanAllah, this zakat that the rich have been commanded to give was given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what? And much more. Because they only have to give what? A portion of from a lot. You see? This right here, when an abd, when the slave reflects upon the likes of this, this shows him or her the tremendous generosity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon his slaves. And the outstanding treatment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, yeah, he displays to his slaves. He treats them in the most kindness of ways. Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I want you to think about this ayah. This ayah is in Surah, uh, is in Surah Al Talaq. Naam. And it's verse number seven. What do you think about this ayah? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما آتاها. Allah azza wa jalla, he says, Allah does not put a burden on a soul beyond that which he has given it. Huh? Allah does not put anything upon a soul except that he, give that he has given that individual what it needs to handle that which has been put upon it. Now, reflect on that. Reflect on that. Now this, now, this is in general. This in general, right? But reflect on it specifically how it relates to the zakat. That Allah Ta'ala has not put anything upon a person except that he's given you what you need to do it. Now, Allah Ta'ala has made it mandatory upon the rich to give money. And thus Allah Ta'ala gives them money so they can give it in his way. What? You see, do you see the blessing in this? Right? You see the blessing? Allah has mandated that, 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 that the rich give, that zakat be paid. And he enriches those who have to pay it. But what they need to pay it. That makes sense? That makes sense? So you're giving away money, right? That Uslan is not yours. Originally, the foundation, that's the cat you're giving away, doesn't belong to you anyway. Right? But are you tasked to give it from that which has come? Yeah, and, he, uh, and it's burdensome? No, because Allah Ta'ala gives you what to give away. He gives it to you what to give away to others. It don't belong to you, Aslan. It doesn't belong to you to begin with, but he gives it to you so you can give it to others. Allah Ta'ala said of his noble book, he says, Min ma yunfiqun. yunfiqoon. He says, and from what we had given them, they spend it. From what we gave them, they spend what? In charity. This is a ni'mah. This is a ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. When a person realizes this should be an aid to help them what to give it. Because it's not like they're tasked with something that they don't have. They have to go out and find it now so they can get no, no. It's if, if, if you have it to give, it's upon you to give. And it's easy for you to give because Allah already gave it to you. Ma'am. Wa hiya sadaqah. Tu'khadhu. The zakah is a sadaqah that is taken. Min adhniya. Wa turaddu ala al-fuqara. It's a charity that is taken from the rich and is given to the poor. It's taken from the rich and is given to the poor. Just contemplate on this, right? If everybody were to implement the Sharia correctly, there will be no need for a mandated welfare system, right? Because the poor will be taken care of from the zakat that is paid out by the rich. You see what I'm saying? When a person reflects upon this, it should become extremely clear to them that what that the Sharia is the best system for mankind to implement to bring prosperity to their lives. Because what it takes care of everyone, right? It takes care of everyone, and this zakat. For the rich, for those who their wealth has reached in Nisab, inshallah, we're going to come to that in a little bit. It is that which is mandatory upon the individual, as yani, the individual, yani, bi'ayni, it becomes mandatory upon the individual. And this here is a benefit. It's not something that, yani, is state mandated. Right? It's not something that is state mandated. But whether a person is living in an Islamic country or they're living in a non Islamic country or they're living in the middle of the Amazon, right? In the middle of the Amazon, where no sovereign government has any type of real influence, if their wealth has reached that level, he still got to give zakat. You find somebody to give zakat to. You see? Go find someone to give zakat to. You understand? In that tremendous benefit. So in any event, it is that which is taken from the rich and given to what? The poor. That's how it works. Yeah, subhanAllah. 
Look at the justice here. Because remember, justice, adil, is what wada'u shay fi mawdi'i, is to put everything in its proper place. That's justice. You put everything in its proper place. Now, when it comes to giving, right, who should give? The rich. Why? Because they have it to give. So the rich giving is appropriate. Who should get it? The poor. Why? Because the poor need it. So it's appropriate that they take it. Right? It's appropriate they take it. Now think about that in contrast to the Catholic societies. Think about that in contrast to the Catholic societies. Where the poor are hit with a higher tax as relates to their wages than the rich. The rich, they get all of the breaks, right? They get all of the breaks and the incentives and the loopholes and all this stuff for the rich. And what they end up giving as relation to what they have is way less than what the poor have to give in relation to what they have. Meaning a bigger percentage comes from the from the from from the poor. And it's man and it's and it's mandated on them, it's forced from them. And the rich find all these tax breaks. Is that not the opposite of you know, subhanAllah? The opposite. Right? The kuffar, they have institutions where they give this break and that break and so on and so forth. And who benefits? The rich. Here in America, the top one percent. They're the only ones that see the, the benefit from this from this bill and that bill and, and this law and that law and so on and so forth, right? Who benefits? The rich. Do the poor see that? No. Do the, do, the, do, the, do the middle class see that? No. Not at all. Who sees it? Who benefits from it? The people who don't need it anyway because they're already the wealthiest ones. Right? And all of that happens under the system of what? Democracy. So who in their right mind, when they look at the injustice that 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 that, that exists therein, would want to be an advocate for something like that? No, we need Sharia. Why? Because it's justice. Everyone gets their right. The money's taken from the rich, it's given to the poor. Right? It's taken from the rich and it's given to the poor. You see? And the kuffar, at some level, whether they acknowledge it or not, they know that our way is superior. They know it. Because if you went to anybody off of the street and you say, listen, when it comes to the likes of these things, what's more appropriate? That the poor pay more or the rich pay more? They're gonna say the rich should pay more. Okay, is it appropriate that we take from the rich and give to the poor? They're gonna say what? Yeah, if a person is poor, and their money has not reached the bare minimum of what it you know, of when the zakat becomes obligatory, they don't have to pay zakat. Period. Is that fair? They'll say, Yeah, that sounds good. You don't make enough, so you don't gotta pay that tax. That sounds that's that sounds excellent. That sounds the way it should be. And then you tell them, nah, that's how it is in the Sharia. <laughs> their face might change then. Right? But uh, yeah, what Allah has revealed is superior. And that's the reality on every level. When you contemplate, when you look, when you compare, it's superior. And of course it's superior because it's the law from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not some man-made stuff that human beings keep making up and whatever. Right? hal, This zakat, يَتُرَتَّبُوا عَلَيْهَا مِنَ الْمَصَالِحِ وَالْمَنَافِعِ شَيْءٌ كَثِيرٌ That from the, from the zakat, there comes from it, yani, there's linked to it so many benefits, so many upsides and benefits, yani, uh, tremendous. من تحقيق المودة It makes, it's, uh, what do you say? It establishes love and affection. Naam, it establishes love and affection. Naam, وتكافل وتراحم وتعاون and it also establishes uh, mercy, working in mutual cooperating. What the careful? A mutual concern and feeling of responsibility. What do you say? Like the stewardship, 
right? Where you feel, where you feel that you that 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 your fellow man you're entrusted to look after him. You have a sense of you're looking after your yeah you know, the the next man, right? Uh, which is tremendous. You understand? Was zawal al al-zamima min al-hasad and it also removes. Uh, uh, yani, dispraiseworthy traits and characteristics like jealousy, hatred, enmity, and other than that. Why? Because the the the, yani, the poor, when the rich are doing what is what they supposed to be doing, when they're doing that which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made obligatory upon them, then what happens is that what is 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 yani, when the rich do what Allah Taala has made obligatory upon them, what happens is that the poor don't resent them. The poor don't yeah, any, uh, envy them. The poor don't have hatred for them. The poor don't develop animosity towards them. Why? Because they know they're giving. Now, I'll give you an example. Those rich people who spend, right? Those rich people who are uh, uh, philanthropists and they give and so on and so forth. These are what? The most beloved of the, of the people. The poor people don't hate them because they say this man spends in charity or this woman she spends in charity. They do this, they do that. They, they take care of so many charities. So they generally what loved amongst the people because they give. They don't have animosity towards them. Who do they have animosity towards? Those rich people who are stingy and don't give and don't care about nobody. Those are the ones they don't like. Those are the ones they have animosity towards. Those are the ones they have enmity towards. Those are the ones they have hatred towards. Why? Because they feel you're not helping. You're not helping the next man, and you have the ability to do it. You understand? Now, in a society that is implementing the Sharia, ma'am. That is implementing, yes, the Sharia, the Islamic law. You won't find the likes of this. Why? Because the poor know that which is reaching them from the money that was taken from the rich in, in, in the zakat has come from the rich and now it's reaching them. They're benefiting from it. So much good comes from it. And from that good is that what? Is that it alleviates any type of animosity or rancor that the Muslims may have in a heart for one another. So when they come together now, they come together and 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 and, and they don't feel away, for lack of a better term. And when you reflect upon the deen of Al Islam, there's so many aspects in the deen that are equalizing aspects that bring us together and help us to have a, a yani uh, they help us to have mutual love, respect for one another, and it, it, it removes and is a barrier of animosity. I give you an example: is that what, when a person dies, whether they poor or whether they rich, they're wrapped in the same shroud, right? Whether they poor or rich, wrapped in the same shroud, they get put inside the ground, no coffin, right? Put inside the ground, all the same way, unmarked grave, all the same way. So in death, there's no distinction. You don't know who was rich, who was poor, who was this, that, nothing like this. Yeah. But with the kuffar, subhanAllah, the one who is poor he, in, a, in a little wooden box, the other one, his, 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 yeah, yeah, in a part of his grave, and the other one, the rich man, yeah, Allah musta'an inside of a box, and he, you know, subhanAllah, na'am. Yeah. All kind of crazy stuff, right? The casket may cost more than people's rent. SubhanAllah, look at look at this. You, you understand what I'm saying? But if another example that 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 shows and brings the hearts together where there's no distinct any is that what the Hajj, Umrah. When a person inside ihram, the clothes are the same. It's not like you say, oh, his ihram better my ihram. It's all the same. It's all the same. Plain white, same, right? There's no distinction when they're standing there in the prayer, huh? When they, oh, everybody ihram, you don't know who's rich, you don't know who's poor, you don't know who pays zakat, you don't know who receives zakat, you don't know. They're all the same. So what does that do when you when you feel like we're all in the same boat? That brings your hearts together. Because you feel like we're all in the same boat. Right? When we stand inside the prayer, we don't have lines in the prayer for the rich one and then lines for the poor one. You understand? Everyone is standing right there. Hill to hill, shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot. There's no distinction between the rich, the poor, the, the ruler, the one who's ruled. Yeah, I mean, all the same. This is from what? The beauty of the deen of Al-Islam. This is from the beauty of the deen of Al-Islam. Whether the person is the ruler of the country or the person is, is, is one of the constituents, they're all praying in the same row, same line. When they die, same type of deal. 
shrouded the same way, you know what I mean? Put in the ground the same way, and that's that. This the way it should be, worldwide. When a person looks at this and you tell them, and, and, and you present that picture to, let's say, to a non-Muslim, present that picture. Which one? Which, which one you think is more right? Which one sound more right to you? They're gonna say, of course, the Islamic way. That sounds that sounds beautiful. Matter of fact, they might even think that sounds too good to be true. They ain't no way like that, mm -hmm. right? But there is. Alhamdulillah, the lands of the Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Now, so all of these are from the beauties, and and the Sheikh goes on and he says, "Women, women, women, mahasin." Had the din and al azim and wahiyah wahiyah min mahasan had the din al azim. The zakah is from the beautiful aspects and and characteristics of this religion, of this tremendous way of life, the din of al Islam. See, these are some of the things that we we need to start yani, showing the people when we give them da'wah, showing them the beauty of Islam, nam, showing them the beauty of Islam from different ways. You understand? It's important and incumbent that we start doing and showing them the beauty of Islam, especially that we live in a time where there's so many Muslims who are astray that show them the ugly side of Muslim behavior, right? The ugly side of, of what they do, the mistakes that they make. And because people are ignorant and they don't know, they attribute the mistakes of the Muslims to the deen of Islam. So we have to make it clear to them that what those things that they're doing, that's not from Islam, that's not what we have been commanded to do, but rather Islam is this, right? But they're human beings and they make mistakes and you know, they came up short. But you can't blame, you can't blame Islam for what they have done. That's what they did. They're gonna answer for it. But this is what the religion is. This is the way it is. This way you know, uh, people are supposed to be, right? So it is incumbent that in addition to showing them what Islam is not, that we show them what Islam is and we share with them the likes of these things. These nights are these beautiful things that they have never heard of before. The Shaykh he says, Because the 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 zakah, yani, it establishes great good, great rectification in Muslim societies. Great good and great Rectification inside of Muslim societies. Naam, I want you to think about that. All the good that comes in Muslim societies. Naam, I want you to reflect upon this. Naam, how many, how many millionaires, right? <clears throat> how many millionaires and billionaires in the world today, right? Subhanallah, if, 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 if everyone were to give properly and the money were to reach those who it should reach, would it, should a society have any homeless? Should a society have uh, single mothers who are forced to live on and, and sleep upon the streets and things of this nature? No, not at all. But everyone, but everyone will be taken care of, right? وَتُظْهِرُوا قُوَّةِ الْتَكَافُ الَّذِي جَاءَ بِهِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَأَوْجَبَهُ وَإِفْتَرَضَ and it also shows you the mutual concern and the mutual feeling of responsibility for the next man that Islam has come with, rather that is been made obligatory. It's been made as an obligation, right? Not just something encouraged. No, this is an obligation. You have to have concern for the next person. You have to have concern for their well-being, so on and so forth. The Prophet وسلم, he mentioned. As it comes in a hadith that is mutafiqun alayh min hadith ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu sadaqatan tu'khadhu min min aghniyaihim wa turaddu ala fuqara'ihim it is, a, it is a mandatory charity that is taken from the rich of them taken from the rich of a people and given to the poor of a people and given to the poor of the people na'am wa lihada labud so for this reason it is a must, it is a must for what? And يُعْنَ الْمُسْلِمُ بِهَذِهِ الْفَرِيضَةِ الْعَظِيمَةِ It is a must that the Muslim, he has a concern for this tremendous obligation. Naam, to have concern for this tremendous obligation. فَمَنْ كَانَ عِنْدَهُ مَالٌ يَبْلُغُ نِصَابٌ وَجَبَ عَلَيْهِ and يتعلم أحكامها حتى يؤديها 
كما أمره الله أو كما أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى إلى أهلها. So when a person has enough money and his money has reached the nisab, then it becomes binding upon that person to learn the rules and the regulations of the zakah so that they can give it properly the way in which Allah has commanded and that, and that they will give it to the proper people. They will give it to the proper people. Now the nisab person may say, well, what's the minimal amount before you have to pay the zakah, right? The nisab, the ulama, they bring examples on how much it is in grams of gold and how much it is in grams of silver. We're going to use silver, inshallah ta'ala. The nisab is, is what is equivalent to 596 grams of silver. Right? So the monetary amount that is equivalent to 596 grams of silver, then that is what is the nisab. That is the minimal amount. Then that right there is what is the minimal amount. So once the money has reached that amount, and not just it reached that amount, but it reached that amount and then a whole year has passed. A whole year has passed on that amount. Then a person has to give zakat from his money. How much? 2.5%. 2.5%. It's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. At all. 2.5%. That's it. Right? This is a ni'mah, right? It's a ni'mah. The kuffar, those who mandate rates upon their people, you find it's way more than this. Some kuffar, right? Uh, like, like the Christians and that, some of their churches, like the evangelical churches and other than them, they take from their, from their, uh, from their followers 10% and upwards, 10% and more of their wages, right? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The coats. <laughs> the coats take more. Yeah. I'm saying the coats take more. The coat of Dr. York, the coat of Dr. York, they used to have they used to have people living in dorms. Yeah, coats, yeah. People living in dorms. They had mandatory, each dorm had to bring in like 10 G's a week. Each dorm. Well, here's a coat, I mean, you know, but anyway, right? Alhamdulillah, I never said Islam was Sunnah. All praise and thanks belong to Allah, God is to Islam and God is to the Sunnah. 2.5% upon everybody, no, only upon those who their money reaches the minimum amount. As soon as it reaches the minimum amount, no, once you have that minimum amount for a year, for a year. So if your wages reach the minimum amount, but you live from paycheck to paycheck, so it reached the minimum amount, but before the next paycheck, you done spent all your money on bills and food and, and this and that, that and that, you don't got to pay this account. Why? Because you never reached the minimum amount and it sat for a year. So you don't have to pay it, but you can receive it. You follow? SubhanAllah. Look at this. This is the deen of Islam. Allahu Akbar. Naam. Wa an yuhafidha ala ikhrajiha and you have to learn about the zakat so that a person he can preserve and giving it out. So he gives it out and he feels good about it. Now I'm the person, right? You should want to give zakat. He should be happy. Once his once his wealth reaches that minimum amount and it sits for a year, he should be happy to yeah, alhamdulillah, now I can finally give zakat. Why? Because now you have an opportunity to worship Allah with this worship. And that's ibadah maniya. With this worship, that is a it, it is a financial worship. Now you can worship Allah with that type of worship. Alhamdulillah, it's beautiful. All right. So a person should be happy. Should be waiting, looking, so they can give. So they can give. You see. Mutaqarriban biha ila Rabbi. ليفوزوا بتحقيقه لهذه العبادة فوزا عظيما and he should or she should be hungry to pay the zakat 
doing so, so as to draw near to their Lord. So as to draw near to their Lord by this tremendous act of worship. So they can draw near to their Lord and so that they're able to attain the establishment of it, of this beautiful and tremendous act of worship, so they can get the tremendous reward. So they can get the tremendous reward. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ مُتَقَرِّبٌ إِلَى اللَّهِ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنَّ اَفْتَرَضَهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى عَلَى عِبَادِهِ And there is nothing, and this is important for you to know and to understand, there is nothing that the one who seeks to draw near unto, his, uh, uh, unto Allah, the one who's seeking to draw near unto Allah, there is nothing that he can use to draw near unto Allah that is more beloved to Allah than that which Allah has made obligatory upon him. You understand? So if you want to draw near unto Allah, then at the top of your list of the deeds that you want to do to draw near unto Allah are those deeds that he made obligatory upon you. Those deeds that he made obligatory upon you. So the salah, we should, yani, subhanAllah, you want to draw near unto Allah, then be steadfast upon the obligatory prayers. Naam, you want to draw near unto Allah, be steadfast upon fasting in Ramadan. You want to draw near unto Allah, be steadfast upon giving charity once your money has reached that level. You, wanna, you want to draw near unto Allah, then be steadfast upon uh, uh, yani, uh, making the hajj, then make the hajj when you have the financial and physical means to make uh, the hajj. Make the hajj. Naam. And likewise, from those things in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a bit, uh, yani obligatory upon us as individuals, because that may change, right? So for example, for the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him to be married, for the husbands, for example, then Allah ta'ala has mandated that you fulfill the rights of the, your women folk. So fulfill the rights. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given children, then you have to fulfill the rights of what? Of your children. Naam. All of us, because we have parents, that we have to what? Fulfill the rights that our parents have upon us from being righteous to them and so on and so forth. So the point is, is that everything that is wajib, everything that is obligatory, there's nothing you can draw near unto Allah that is better than that. After that, then what? Those things that are recommended. Those things that are recommended. Now, so for example, after the obligatory prayer, then the voluntary prayer after the obligatory fast then what the voluntary fast after making hajj the one time then what then the voluntary hajj so to work right because hajj only once you make hajj once you're done for your life so if you go again that's just increasing in good that's voluntary to to right so on and so forth these things yani are tremendously tremendously important just reflect upon that. Reflect, think, ponder, so that we can see better, bithnilahi ta'ala, the beauty of the deen of al-Islam, so we could, inshallah ta'ala, be more appreciative of the deen and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to, so it can strengthen us, so we don't become embarrassed, to admit to the people that we are upon the deen of al-Islam. Especially in a time or in a place that we live in where it's sad, but the a lot of the Muslims, they almost look at sharia like it's a bad word, like they want to shy away from it, right? They use, to the point where kuffar, some of them think it's like a aha question. I like think they catch you. Do you believe in the Sharia, brother? Or do you believe in the Sharia? Are you an advocate of Sharia? And Muslims become ashamed, apologetic. And when they answer, of course. It's like a dumb question. Of course, I'm a, of course I advocate the Sharia. I'm a Muslim. You ask me a stupid question like that. I'm supposed to say no? I'm supposed to say I'm democratic? No. Yes, we advocate for the Sharia. We're not going to apologize to you for that. That's Allah Ta'ala's law. It's, it's, it's better than what you people is upon. Why should I be ashamed about that? But they got the Muslims into thinking it's like a bad word. Why? Because of the uh, khawarij and, you know, 
Because the Khawarij, yeah, they got them thinking, you know, something else. Why? Because they, they call it thing Sharia and it's not Sharia. Right? They call it thing Sharia and it's not Sharia. So they got people apologizing. No, they ain't apologizing for Sharia, but explain to the people what it really is. So they don't have misconceptions. Don't run away from the Sharia and for democracy for what? You understand? This is what we have to remind the people of, you know? This is why we don't allow people, we don't allow the politicians to come into the masjid and talk about politics and encourage people about voting and voting rights. No, we're not down with that stuff, period. We don't want to go to their luncheons. We're not down with that stuff, period. Nor do we find any honor in Muslims being elected to positions in a Catholic government. It's not honor. It's not noble at all. It's not a source of, of pride for us to be proud of. But in fact, that's sad. It's sad. It's something that should uh, cause the eyes to fill with tears that the Muslims have become so duped. The Muslims are so subjugated. They have become so beaten and so deflated that they think these things will bring prestige. When the prestige lies in following the deen of Al-Islam, that's where the prestige lies. And following the deen of Al-Islam, being a good Muslim, that's where the prestige lies. Not in doing these things that is not from Islam. As the ulama, they mentioned, that democracy, demokratiya, he al kufr, as uh, Imam uh, Muqbal used to say, democracy is disbelief. Now, I mean, we spoke about that before. And that's the reality, what it is. We had, alhamdulillah, we have that which Allah Ta'ala has revealed to us. Allah Ta'ala, inside his Quran, he says what? اتبعوا ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه أولياء. In Allah's noble book, He says, "Follow that which has been revealed to you from your Lord, and do not follow other than it." Huh? Follow that which has been revealed to you from your Lord, and do not follow other than it. And this is why we don't. We're not going to apologize because what has been revealed to us is what the Sharia. Has democracy been revealed to us? No. Ishtiraqi, uh, huh? communism, socialism, all this stuff, has that been revealed to us? No. So we don't care about that. Right? But what? Allah has sent down the finest way of life for us. So we are happy with that. As Allah Ta'ala says, الْيَوْمَ أَثْمَنْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَثْمَنْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَةٍ وَرَضِيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا and on this day, I have perfected for you your deen. What's deen? Way of life. Your way of life. And I've completed my favor upon you. And I am pleased. Who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm pleased that you have Islam as your deen. That you have Islam as your way of life. So that's what is pleasing unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What? Islam. So those are the laws that we are down with. What? The laws of Islam. Islam. But at the same time, and I must say this just for full clarity on the issue, I don't want no ambiguities and so on and so forth, we still got to respect the laws of whatever land that we're in, right? So I don't want nobody to say, okay, no, they ain't from this now, I don't care about that. Islam ain't telling me I got to I gotta do 45 in this road. I want 50. I'm going to do 60. No, you got to follow the laws, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta follow the laws. You gotta be respectful of the laws, and so on and so forth, right? Um, but at any event, of course, we don't shy away from you know, any of that which Allah has revealed is superior. But remember, as relates to the likes of these things, they don't contradict the deen in any which way, shape, and form. So we, you know, we comply. We comply because it's for safety, general public safety, and so on and so forth. The speed limits and so on and so forth. So we comply to these things. Stopping at red lights. Stopping at the stop signs, yielding when it says yield, so on and so forth. These are examples of the of the type of laws that we we respect them. We have to respect them, right? And so on and so forth. But as far as those things that go against the deen, right? Like them allowing same sex marriage or alcohol or all this type of nonsense. Wait, wait, that stuff. Uh, wait, wait, no, no, uh, -uh. huh? 
Inshallah. Tayyip. And then the, the Shaykh goes on to go into the next pillar, you know, highlighting some benefits and some superiorities of the, of the next pillar, which is al Siyam fasting in the month of Ramadan. But with Nilahi Ta'ala, we will save that until the next class and the next sitting. Fa Laktafi, we have the Qadr.